Final game of the road trip, we're here in Midland. The Rough Riders taking on the Rock Hounds, and one of the stars of last night's ball game, Brett Nicholas, joined me. Brett, you went four for five at the plate, four runs batted in, tying career highs in both of those. You must have been seeing the ball well last night, feeling pretty comfortable up there. Yeah, uh, it felt, felt pretty good last night. It felt pretty good the last few, uh, few games, just haven't really had anything to show for it. But uh, luckily it was just about trying to stay as short as possible and you know, found some holes last night, and it, and it worked out for all of us. How big was it for the offense to be able to have a night like that after the offense has been struggling so much here over the last week? 20 hits, that's a new season high. Everybody contributed. That must get everybody's confidence level up just a little bit higher. Yeah, you can see how funny of a game it is because we went, you know, what is it, 40 innings without a run, and last night we had 20 hits, 11 runs. So it, we just kind of build off each other, and, and hitting's contagious, and you saw it last night. And, you know, it's just a matter of trying to get one or two hits today, and, and it'll get started up again, and hopefully we'll uh, – you know, maybe not 20 hits again, but but something to where we put up uh, a few runs and, and help our pitchers out. You wouldn't mind the 20 hits again, of course. Uh, you had been struggling pretty badly for you this season. What did you do to kind of get yourself out of it? What were some of the things that you were working your way through at the plate? Just uh, about staying through the ball and trying to see it a little bit longer. You know, I was trying to guess a little bit. I uh, started to, you know, kind of read into the fact that our, our offense was struggling. And I know... Uh, I'm a big contributor in our offense, so I was trying to trying to do too much, and it's just about taking a step back and, and trusting your teammates. And uh, as soon as I as soon as I did that, and I think as a team, as soon as we did that, uh, it starts to show, and we we've put together uh, a couple of good games in a row. Is that something that it's difficult for you to take your mind off of the fact that you are really the engine that makes this offense churn when you're hitting the ball well? Generally, the offense is scoring runs, and when you're not, obviously everyone else has to pick up the slack. Uh, that, that can be a, a big load to bear. Do you not think about it? No, you really can't think about it, and I think that's how uh, you know I've been successful so far this year. Uh, it's really just all about trusting the teammates and you know, I, I got a few hits last night, yeah, but, you know, if, if Theodore Martinez and, and Strasburger and, and Benson behind me, if they're not doing what they did, you know, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have scored 11 runs. And it, it, takes, it takes a whole team in order to, uh, to put together a performance like we we've, we've did. The way pitchers are, are working you, are they changing up what they do, considering you've had so much success, success this season? Uh, have you noticed any difference, and has that forced you to make an adjustment? Uh, yeah, they've they've kind of changed it up. Uh, Hernandez, the left-hander in the first game, was a good example. He started throwing more left-on-left -left changeups, and uh, you know, it's it's not so much a, a side of the plate that they're changing up, maybe just a pattern that they're doing. Um, it's it's something that you know I've just got to recognize and and be able to adjust within the game. And uh, if I can adjust at bat to a bat instead of game to game, it'll it'll be uh, be more successful for the rest of the year. Here with Rogers first baseman Brett Nicholas. Brett, you were involved with a pretty special play last night, the back end of a triple play, uh, first one that I had ever seen in person. Had you ever been a part of one or seen one yourself? No, that was the first one I've ever been a part of. Uh, we tried to think back to Little League days where guys were just running all the field. Nobody really knew what was going on, but that's the first one I, I've ever been a part of from, from high school and beyond. It was, uh, it, was, it was a big momentum swing in the game because they actually had uh, guys on first and second with no outs. And that ball was hit well. You know, we would have been lucky to get two uh, double play out of it, let alone three. And I think we kind of built on that and, and took it to the rest of the game. It's so strange how the inning can end like that in an instant. All of a sudden, you're in a, the team is in a jam. You know, McBride had been pitching well in the first and in a couple of hits, as you said. And it's a four-run game. You figure, okay, maybe we hold them just one run here. One play and it's over. It's a little bit surreal. It looked like the other players uh, on the other team didn't really know what to do at that point. <laughs> Yeah, everybody kind of like, you know, did that really happen? You know, they kind of figure out if, if we really got three outs right there because your, your, your mindset's starting to think, all right, let's get the guy at the plate. Let's get him out. You know, we'll give up the other two runs, but we, we've got a four-run lead, and, and suddenly you got three outs, and, and nobody really knew what happened, but, I, you know, it took a few seconds, and finally, uh, you know, you, you get pretty excited. And, and uh, it, like I said, it was the first one I've ever been a part of. I, I really didn't know what to do, so it was pretty fun. You know who the last first baseman uh, for the Rough Riders who was involved in a triple play was? Hopefully it was someone in the big leagues. Well, it was your hitting coach, Jason Hart. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, he, he didn't remember it. So try and remember this one. He, he did not remember when I asked him about it earlier today. Uh, Brett, another big league rehabber going today in Matt Harrison. There has been a glut. It seems like one a week at least uh, here for this team, and Harrison's going to start again. We're going to see Colby Lewis again this weekend. Uh, what value do you take out of working with the big leaguers uh, here on such a regular basis uh, here in the regular season? 
It's big for us because I, I think it shows how close we are to the big leagues and how, you know, we can be one call away from, from playing with them because they're not just going to go down to any level and play. They're going to play at a, a level that's close enough to the big leagues so that they can get as ready as, as, as ready as they can possibly be without facing big leaguers before they go back up there. So I think it, it says a lot at the competition we're playing at, and it says uh, a lot to each player that, you know, we're, we're very close and, and you almost feel like you can touch it. Uh, it's also very big in the sense that learning learning from their routines, learning from their day-to-day -day, uh, actions, learning, you know, we've had luckily had a guy like Kobe Lewis in here a few times, and, uh, you know, I feel like every time you kind of learn something new from him every time. And someone who's been around for so long, you know, he's gone overseas and played, he's come back and was successful. And just learning what they do that makes them so good is uh, is, you know, a huge, huge asset and something that, you know, we're, we're very fortunate that we can experience it. And we have had a lot this year, so we've been able to ask a lot of questions and see a lot of guys. You were featured in USA Today's uh, Sports Weekly section here this week, uh, unfortunately wearing a Myrtle Beach Pelican <laughs> uniform. But uh, congratulations on that national exposure. Uh, but in the article, you talk a, a lot about kind of your career projection and how you were a guy who did not make a team out of spring training for a couple of years and uh, almost an accidental uh, assignment to Myrtle Beach last year where you really took off. Uh, was there any point over the course of your career, you know, you were a sixth round draft pick, a fairly high draft pick, uh, where you saw where you were, you saw maybe how the organization looked at you, and you said, okay, I've got to take myself to the next level because uh, what I'm doing right now is not good enough for where I want to be. Yeah, you start to do that a little bit. Uh, you also, at least for myself, I, I knew that I could play at a high level. You know, I, I didn't know that I could be this successful right away, but I knew that I had the ability and the, the mental side of the game uh, that I could play at a high level, but sometimes you just got to wait your turn and, and you know, you get you get kind of frustrated and you, you kind of learn from it. But uh, we were actually talking, uh, Jimmy Reyes and I were talking the other day, and it's, you know, I don't know if, if they would have, you know, said, all right, you're going to Hickory first year, and then next year you're going to Myrtle Beach right away. If I'd be the same player, if I wouldn't have, if I, if I wouldn't have gone through the struggles and if I didn't, uh, you know, play with the coaches and the players that I played with, would I have become the same player as I am now? And, and I just can't answer that. You know, I, I think that 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 struggle and, and the guys that I came across were such a big part of, of me as a person, not only on the field, but off the field. And, uh, you know, I tell people this all the time. It's it's not only going to make me a better ball player, but it's going to make me a better father down the road. Uh, it makes me a better friend, a better, better, better son, better brother. So it's just something that you know, you just got to take in stride, and, and luckily it's worked out so far, but uh, hopefully this is just the start of it and, and I can keep it going. Well, that's a great way to look at it, and uh, so far you've got the results here that have uh, brought you this far. Hopefully this is uh, not the end of the success for you, that it keeps going throughout the next month and the next year, uh, no matter where you end up. Thanks a lot for the time. Congratulations on the great game last night. Best of luck here as you push forward through the final month. Thank you very much. It's Brett Nicholas. We're back right after this here on the Frisco Rough Riders Baseball Network.